Back at Brad's Motor. Let's get this thing together. What do you think? About time. All right. <laughs> we're getting at it. So here's where we left off and why we left off. We stopped last time because we only had one new needle bearing. We didn't want to reuse the needle bearings. So I got two more needle bearings and where's that one? So we got three. We got a Wiseco and two for manufacturing supply. They'll work. And then during the week I discovered we're missing the crank key because this new old stock crank didn't come with the key, but I can pop this out of here through the plastic. Is it gonna come out? There it comes. Right there, in coming out of the plastic, is a brand new crate key. Not rounded over? Not rounded over, not beat up. So, we'll get that all together. Um, first thing we're going to do, Brad's going to turn this upside down and shake it to make sure nothing fell in the motor for the last week when it's been sitting here. We're going to give it a good shake, and then we're going to hone out the cylinders quick with the dingle ball hone. So, uh, let's get to shaking, Brad. <laughs> and I'm putting this the keyway right here right there on the table right on the table <laughs> where we lose it anybody that tells you that a triple is light don't believe them it's not the extra light triple it's not the extra light yeah this is the extra heavy triple Funny, grab that and flip it back. yeah all right pretty convinced Farley. nothing fell in the motor for the last week so uh, I'm going to find the dingle ball hone and we'll bring you back. Oh, you lost that one. Meanwhile, right Dennis is playing ball with Farley in the shop. <laughs> All right, so the dingle ball hone. So these come in specific sizes, and Dennis asked a really good question. Why? Well, I think it's so that you don't fold over these little wires that the dingle balls are mounted on, because then you'd wreck it. You want them to, you know, be springy. So this is a brand new one. It's a little bigger. And uh, I've been asked in the past, what's this magic red juice you're using when you're dingle ball honing? It is two-stroke oil. Uh, Polaris VES Race. You need to use something. So I, you notice I got the towel pulled back so that we don't snake the towel, wrap shit up, and fling cylinders. And I'm just giving her a little, uh, oh, come on, give me some oil. I'm just giving her some oil there. That's what she said. That's what she said, yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, you don't have to drown them in oil, but you need some oil. And I'm sure I'll be adding more as I go. That's sucking it up pretty quick in there. Yeah. It's pretty dry. We'll give her a little quick hone, though. So, just pull the trigger. Pretty oily. Mm -hmm. Looks about right for the cross hatch. It looks worse than it really is right now because we got to wipe it out. But we'll do that to all three and then we'll wipe them down. All right, let's give them a quick wipe. Grab, grab a rag. Let's see what this crosshatch pattern looks like. Oh, there's the dog. <laughs> Ooh, not bad. Let's go out in the in the let's go out in the sunlight right here and let them see. Not bad. There's this little bit of a stain right there, so I'm going to run through the process one more time on each of these, but uh, then we'll call that good. Yeah, that looks sweet. That was that one that started melting, I bet. This probably was. Looking at these oilers got me now. 
What's uh, that? The oil lines. Well, they're on the... There's a, two bleeders here, but then there's one that shoots in. Well, that one's to vent to the water pump. Cause no, because that seals it. So that seals yeah, it. but those look where they're pointed. They're pointed at the water pump. Oh, okay. That's why I came in here and came out those. Oh, I don't know. That looks pretty good. This is on down. Oh, it is? All right. That's fine. I can edit. Yep. So I'm wiping these out, but uh, just so you know, that's not good enough. Uh, I will be taking each of these cylinders to my basement and scrubbing out the bores with Tide. Um, you need to use Tide or Dawn dish soap or something that, that will get the grit out. I always use Tide. Um, if you don't do that, if you just clean it out, sprayed it with brake cleaner, oiled it and put your motor together, you'll kill your rings really fast because the grit remains embedded in the cylinder walls. It's worse for cast iron than it is for Nicosol, but uh, it doesn't matter. You got to do it either way. All right, here we are using Grandma's old heirloom table outside again. Brad's going to get all the oil and honing grit out that he can before I bring those down to the basement and do the tide thing to them. Yep, Brad just dried them out after the tide. And I want to show you what the crosshatch looks like out here in the sun. Hopefully it'll come through on the video. Super nice crosshatch. These cylinders, the Nicosil is all really nice on these. So uh, we're moving ahead. All right, ready for the next phase of the assembly. So next thing we got to do is get the pistons on. And let's talk about that for a second. So, you can see on the top of the piston there's an arrow. On a Polaris, that typically points to the mag side. But if you want to confirm it, two-stroke ring, two rings are always pinned. And uh, if you look where the, where the ring ends are, which is where the pins are, there's one right here. That is obviously not going in the exhaust port. So, uh, there, is, there is no intake port on these cylinders. It's smooth all the way down because they're case reed motor. So the ring ends are going on the intake side, 100% confirmed. So it's pretty easy to put these together. Um, these are SPIs. We've already checked the uh, the pin fit. You only have to check it once. Okay. Uh, the pin fit's really nice. Uh, so basically, we're going to put the needle bearings in and uh, oil them, put the piston on, put the clips on. That's about it. That's that's it's not that tough. So, needle bearings first. Did we check those fit? Yeah, those the fit. needle bearings? Yeah. Oh, they're going to fit. I've never, can't fit. imagine they don't. <laughs> well, I mean, I remember on mine we had a little difficulties. Not with the needles. The pins the were pins. tighter. The yeah. pins were real tight on your them. on your pistons, and we had to heat your pistons to get the pins in. Yeah. Just due to age or what? It's, that's just manufacturing tolerances. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So, we're just giving her, like I said before, this is Polaris VS Race or VS Extreme, whatever. Polaris Red Juice that's in there. Right now, at the top, there it is. There's your two pins. So they're at the top, which is the intake side, the way the motor's sitting. I guess I'll get this started a little bit. Boy, that slide's nice. And then just kind of braille it through the hole. Hmm. Now it doesn't want to go all the way through. So what's up? Does it fit through the pin, through the bearings? Oh, really nice. Really good fit through the bearing. Let me give it a little more oil. Can't really over oil it. It'll just come out the exhaust. All right, one more try. There it goes. All right, so we'll get the clips in. Probably pause the video. Uh, if you go back and look at when we did Dennis's TX340, there's some really good footage of, of getting these clips in on that video. So uh, I'll put a card up right there for you. Let's go back, watch that quick, then come back here and we'll continue putting the Ultra back together. 
Farley and I are really trying hard to get this channel off the ground, but with winter being over, subscriptions have kind of tapered off. So if you could hit the subscribe button, that'd really help us. Thanks. All right, it's time to do the rings, and I want to give you a little close-up here. Hopefully this will come through. If you look at the rings, can you read the writing? Yeah, that says top. And uh, so, of course, that's the way they need to go on. And the reason is these are what they call keystone rings. So they're actually wedge-shaped, and the grooves in the piston are wedge-shaped. And uh, the point of that is to help with the gases to... Um, the, the hot gases in the cylinder to force the rings out against the cylinder wall. At least that's my understanding. So we'll get these rings on real quick. Did you guys get that? Yep. Top, top goes to the top. They're the same ring. Slightly different shape. You can see that. Yeah, the keystone. You can definitely see the keystone. These are about the most keystone of any keystone rings I've ever seen. All right, where'd my knife go? Right here. See, I dropped the one end in one groove and one end in the other. Oh, I'm going to lock down. Uh, well, top and bottom. <laughs> oh. Maybe you only need one, pit, one yeah. ring then. That's for the overboard. There you go. There you go. And you can tell, if you put them in upside down, they're going to bind up. You won't be able to compress them in enough to actually get the cylinder on. Hmm. Uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> we all learn through experience. Where's my beer? <laughs> Someone asked a question on your last video about new old stock. Oh, we got that crank on eBay. A lot of people have been asking, where'd you find a brand new crank? It was on eBay. Um, I think there were like four of them on there. And uh, we bought it over a month ago, so what are the odds that it's still on there? But, uh, boy, it was a bargain price, too. It was a lot less money than getting Brad's old crank rebuilt. So, you, I don't know. If you could find a new old stock crank, I don't know why you wouldn't do it, especially if it's cheaper. Make sure it says top. She wants the top. <laughs> she wants to be on top? Yeah, let her. There you go. Farley wants to play ball. That is what Farley is about. Especially when you're here. She, Life of a dog. I play fetch with her all the time, but she knows she isn't going to convince me in the middle of a project like, like she does to you, Dennis. She loves to convince you. <laughs> but when I'm in a project, no, she Farley, wants to leave you alone. Farley knows. I'm, I'm going to work. Right. So then how do you make sure they're index right? Well, there's the, the pin. there's the pins. The gap has to line up with the pin, with the pins yep. in the groove. So let's start dropping cylinders on. Nothing here. Gasket. Oh, it's in the kit. All right. Oh, a little bit of oil on the cylinders first. So let me get a clean rag. Actually, Dennis, you want to grab a paper towel? Just give me a couple of them sheets. And... Yeah, that'll work. So, we want a little something on there. We don't want them to start out dry. But we don't need to soak them down to the point where they're going to follow all the plugs either. So, there better be base gaskets in the kit. going to be a sweet motor when we're done. Yep. It's been a long time coming. I'm glad I uh, got to take time on it. It might snow next week, too. Shh, I see that. Yeah, we're not going to get it done in time for that. <laughs> no. That's a good thing. Alright, a little thin film on all those. Three bond? Nope. No three bond on the base gaskets. But these base gaskets, oh, we got the one stud that came out. Oh, we got to find that stud and get that threaded in, too. Oh, okay, there it was. Right I was there. For it. I didn't see that. So the base gaskets aren't symmetric. That's what I've noticed. So there is a definite right and wrong way for them. That bolt in here. Ah, no. right here. Right there. Yeah, we should find a new bolt for that. 
Or at least uh, tap it again, John. You got pretty beat up. You're dead. Okay. <laughs> You're blocking the camera, Brad. That's right. I'm gonna watch <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. All right. I'm going to clean up these threads and we'll come back. You want to pause her? All right. We got the cylinders oiled. We got the base gaskets on. Got the stud repaired and back in. So they only fit one way. The bolt pattern is not symmetric. Exhaust port obviously has to go to the exhaust side. So what I usually do is reach in and find the pins. You can kind of find them by feel without even looking. And just compress the rings. And boy, these are so much easier than a, a mono block. Looks like I don't have them quite fully compressed. Oh, there she goes. Oh, the one ring's coming out of the earth. That's what's going on. Not lined up with the pin or... Yeah, there we go. Look on the other side, too. Here you go, Farley. Yep, the top ring's coming out of the grid there, too. Not lined up. There we go. No, the bottom one's out. No, hold on. That's way over there. Yeah. Okay, I'll get it. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Oh, push it in there? Or... <sighs> Gonna walk it around past the pin. A little rotational action. Probably should have oiled those, huh? I oiled the cylinders. Oh, you did? Yeah, the cylinders I oiled. I put oil on a rag. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so the rings are oiled. Nice. And the bearings are oiled. Yep. All right, one down. We'll get the rest done. We'll bring you back. Well, we got all excited and almost forgot something really important. You gotta shoot oil down into all the crank bearings. So we're gonna lift the cylinders up yep. just there. a bit. Let's get in there with this little squirt bottle. And give You're them not some... getting it. I can see the hole. There, no, that one. Get them from here, yeah, I'm just there, getting them. Good. That's more than enough. You got about that much room in there, you can shoot them through the Oh really? Okay. I always like to get them through that drip hole. Oh, I know, yeah, you can get right through the drip hole. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yep. But yeah, I see. And that PTO one. We're going to give that, that PTO one. That one that's the big one. That's, that's a lot. All right, that's a good squeeze of oil on the PTO. All better. All better. Let's put the, let's finger tight these down. All right, here's a little something I learned from my buddy, Duct Tape Mike. I'm sure most of you guys watch Todd's channel, and you saw where uh, that uh, Storm RMK that Mike bought from me. After he rebuilt the motor, he had a bunch of problems, and they were taken apart in Mike's shop up north, or, or in uh, Todd's shop up north. Here's what Mike told me that he thinks happened. He thinks he didn't get the cylinder base nuts tight. So he was trying to be fancy and use a... Uh, crow's foot wrench and he thinks that it was just wedging against the casting and geez there is not enough room in here for anything so except the box end so we're just going to run all these down with the box end and uh, get them good and tight and hang on we're going to give them some bumps with the old soft hammer here at the end so uh We'll get them all snugged up and then we'll bring you back for that exciting part because I doubt you've seen anybody do that before. I don't know why they would. <laughs> Hammer torque. Did you hit the subscribe button yet? It really helped me if you did. Thanks. All right, so taking a lesson from Mike, we know that we can swing the uh, box in there. We're never going to get them to work that tight just pulling on them. So we're just going to give them a few hammer torque, a few torques. Why not? Hammer tight. Hammer time. Hammer time. 
Maybe that'll make her see. All right. Feel pretty good about that. Feel like we're not going to lose a base gasket just because of that. All right. Well, Brad, next thing to do is lay an O-ring in each of these and drop a head on. It's really hard to stay on this side of the table all the time when you're filming. <laughs> I see that. I keep trying, but... Well, as long as you're not do doing a Brad. I blocked the whole damn camera. You want you to listen Thanks, to Dennis. I just lost 38 viewers right there. Oh, I didn't know you were viewing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we got these little guys. There's still a lot of gaskets here. I'm not quite too sure about. So there's dowel pins on this. Just got to make sure you get your dowel pins in the right spot. And other than that, they're symmetric. This one's still got a old oh, O-ring on it. You gotta clean the bottom. No, not too bad. They're pretty clean, actually. Yeah, just what I'm sure. yeah. I don't know. As long as there's no big chunks. Oh, it's the pretty silver bolts. Oh yeah. Well, it's like it's hidden by the purple, <laughs> purple-headed colors. Yep. All right, guess I'll look up what these bolts should be torqued to. Torquing them. They're 8 millimeter bolts, so we believe 18 foot-pounds. All right, you get the idea of how that goes. These rubbers for the head covers have a definite way they go on. You see these little rounds right there, right here, right here. And look at the same thing as in the head. So they only go on one way. I just want to mention that when I was out screwing off playing fetch with Farley, uh, Brad replaced the O-rings up here on, on top around the spark plugs. And uh, this is what we've been using lately for O-ring grease. It's <laughs> dielectric grease. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's actually silicone grease, which is what O-ring grease is. I think it's the same. If you think it's not the same, let me know. But uh, we've been having good luck with this bleepity for O-rings. down there. Bleepity bloop. Yeah, bleepity bloop it down in the comments <laughs> if you don't think it's the same. All right, we're getting there. It looks like, uh, I think the reeds are next. What's that you got in your hand there, Brad? A brand new box of some deep forest reeds. Sweet. Let's see. Oh, we better open oh, the box. Open oh. I'll open the box. Brad doesn't set down his drink. He's kind of like Julian. <laughs> oh, I'll just drop that on the floor. Check these out. Pretty sweet. That's this little spacer oh, in here. Brand new stuff. This sled better fucking rip. The sled's gonna rip. Or geez, no wonder why that was expensive. They're thick stickers too. They're not like wimpy stickers. Holy cow! We're gonna have to sticker up Brad's sled. Huh? <laughs> Those are like ten horse stickers. <laughs> thick? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, at least ten. Oh well. All right. Well, we got some gaskets. Let's see, I can see which way we go. I think they go either way. Maybe seen. not. I don't know. Gasket on both sides. Yeah, put it so you can read the V-force when you're on the sled, that's for sure. A little tight. It'll go. Mm, I don't know about that. It's got to fit. It's made for the sled. Mm, I don't know about that. She's a bit off-centered. Oh boy. V-force? What the heck? Really? Try another one. Boy, I don't want to break the plastic. I would. No. I'd say we're gonna get out the little rat tail file and make them. Uh, we try it the other way. Make them fit. I don't think it's 
Well, it doesn't matter. The distance is yeah, the same either way. Right. So, so, so. Yeah, we just need a little rat tail file action there. We'll be right back. We're on. Shouldn't have to fit parts that are this expensive. <laughs> I mean, these are not cheap, this set of reeds. All right, so there's the old reeds and there's the V-Force. So you can see the V-Force has actually got twice as many reeds and uh, they appear to be oh, carbon fiber yeah. as opposed to fiberglass. So Let me bring that up to the camera. Pretty cool. I think that'll equate to more horsepower. More fuel, definitely. Well, that's what they're claiming. Bigger more, tank. More horsepower is what they're saying to us. That's the claim. I can see where it would come from, though. It's twice as much. Twice as much pouring. Surface area, there. yeah. Well, more just... than twice, even, yeah. But it's only going through those couple. <laughs> Nothing like some plastic in your beer. I'm sure it's good for me. Oh, yeah. Binds you up. All right, now we can gasket them. Can we the same way or upside down? Don't, I don't know that it matters. I'm I'm not sure what's going on with that. All right, these guys, make sure they're clean. Oil lines go down. Uh-oh. Look at that. We're going to have to read the instructions, but I think this is going to need a trip through the bandsaw because of these. Or do you not use those? Well, you have to. Yeah, it still won't go in there. All right. It still won't go. Hmm. So uh, we'll get out the instructions quick, but it looks like uh, hmm. it looks like we're gonna need a razor blade here. We don't have, even have to read it. V-Force was smart enough to put a picture on, so a caveman like me can understand. Before, after, I'm gonna lock it up there. So uh, we're gonna need a razor blade. That'll take care of it. Bring you back. We're all doing arts and crafts here. I don't know how else to describe this. We've all got a razor blade. I don't know if you're supposed to use a razor blade, but I got razor blades, so we're using a razor blade and jamming it through. Ooh, the screwdriver helped with that. It's a lot easier once you've actually got the blade through. First off, everybody finger check. Do we all still have all our fingers? No blood. Nine. No blood. All right. Brad's inspecting. I think it'll pass. They just got to be flat, mostly flat, because we do have a gasket oh, thickness. Oh. oh no, that's just yeah. And the bonding surface is out here. Mm-hmm. So just to get it. All right, we're gonna play it safe on these. We're gonna three bond this outer edge, just because we all just did this. Let's see, this is where they drill that out. Put the boost bottle in. Ain't doing it. There's no reason. Boost. There's no reason for it on this one. Right? No, not anymore. Because it's a split. All right. Combination sealant and hair gel. Okay, maybe not hair gel. Well, we thought maybe the oil pump was on upside down because something seemed a little weird. But no. No, we have all of the uh, carb adapters on upside down. So we'll flip them over real quick. Glad I glued them down. Ah, uh, Three bonds not dry yet. Life's good. All right, things are coming together. Um, these fittings, you probably know, they're on bolts. You can tighten them. You can loosen them. They're little banjo fittings. So the next thing we're going to do is new oil lines. Why new oil lines? Good. Why not new oil lines? Why not? It's here. Um, we're going to get the motor straps on, and then uh, we're going to worry about the stator and the flywheel pretty soon. It's, she's shaping up. She's starting to look like a motor. All right, so I got a mark over here on the stator, and you can see I'm hand tightening these with a normal screwdriver right now. But I just want to say this again, because I say this every build. If you needed this to take 
those screws out, you need to use this to put those screws back in. Um, I've had stator screws loosen up. It's no fun. Really awkward right now. You want to come to the other side, Dennis? Got it. There we go. That ain't going nowhere. All right, we're getting our key in the new flywheel. Tap, tap, tap. Nice square key, nice flat flywheel. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I maybe should have done this before I put the stator in. No, you'll be fine. We'll get a screwdriver involved. Other side. There you go. How deep does that go? It's about like that. Now we're going to slip the flywheel on. This is the right one. I mean, that's a genuine Polaris keyway. If the flywheel turns the crank, then you'll never get it lined up. All right, need a light. The key just looked like it was deep to me. Yeah, but it's supposed to bottom out. Well, yeah, I know. That's I'm, what I'm I was sure thinking. it is. Yeah. That take me forty eight tries. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it goes. Bumper on. Getting the key lined up. There we go. Should take her off quick and make sure the key's doing key things. Not walking up. Yep. Okay. Key stayed in. Okay, so the key is at a slight angle. Yeah. And uh, and this thing, the groove as it went on, it just seated the key. So that's why I wanted to make sure we didn't accidentally knock the key out, right. but that it's seated. You could see it's flywheels all the way down now not a typical thing only if you got a brand new flywheel so we'll get that torqued down real quick well we're wrapping her up today what do you think brad back together looking like a motor I feel pretty good about it, Dennis. You see anything weird wrong? This, no, it's all good now. We've had to change a few things around that we put wrong the first time, but yeah, it's a solid. God, that thing's, so it's all new. It's all new. It's all new. The cylinders look great. The Nicosel look great. The crankshaft is perfect. All the castings look good. I think it's going to be good. So, uh, all, right. all right, well, we're wrapping her up for today. There'll be a lot more in this sled, obviously. But uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave me some comments on this. If you're on some vintage sled type social media, maybe a triple group or something, maybe share that we're doing this. You know, people, there's probably not a lot of projects going on on YouTube on the summer for vintage sleds. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Check out the Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the trails. We'll see how long this one is. Yeah,